I guess I can give a, a bit of insight into the infrastructure of PicoS because okay, obviously we switched to being a rolling distro that no longer just uses an upstream existing repo. So we mm-hmm. need to monitor package changes and mm-hmm. build them and then ship them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we brought we basically wrote our own package builder that that leverages Git, uh, mm-hmm. Gitty, uh, mm-hmm. Gitty, mm-hmm. Gitty actions. Mm-hmm. The periodically every hour scans Debian SID and some experimental packages because mm-hmm. we use a we use a mix of both. Checks against our repo to see which ones we've recently built. If if there are updates, it queues them, mm-hmm. and then it just goes through building them one up one at a time, uh, which works pretty well most of the time, except when it's like GCC and it takes an hour and a half to build, <laughs> but. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, yeah, so we've had to build custom software, basically, that um, I can link you to our... You can actually monitor it. We have a dashboard that's available. Okay. So you can uh, you can like look at the queue and stuff. And there's like a list of the packages. These are source packages. Uh, okay. Current 41,000 successfully built. Oh, God. <laughs> there are. Uh, I am working on improvements to this. It's not. Uh, this build is not. It's never finished. Um, sure, sure, sure. Uh, things like uh, i386 packages are a bit of a nightmare because uh, mm. we don't want to ship. We are an x86 x64 only distribution, with mm. the exception of i386 ones needed for content creation and gaming. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Um, but then that means that we have to selectively build only the ones we need of that, and that gets a little bit complicated. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wait, uh, what? It's it, a, bit, a bit like I think Ubuntu what, does that as well. So, what content creation ones are there? Because obviously, I know about the the, the gaming ones of their like the the Steam stuff you need. But what what content creation one are there? Uh, stuff like FFmpeg. Uh, because uh, if you want to. Uh, well, Cosmo probably knows more about that than me, to be fair. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. I think it's I did... around... Go on. Yeah, I decided uh, to to add the OBS, uh, not the OBS, the Dev Multipedia, mm-hmm. uh, the Dev Multipedia repo uh, as a target with, for our optimized builds mm-hmm. uh, for basically two reasons. It's basically a whole bunch of multimedia packages uh, that are already updated to the very latest, mm-hmm. uh, but so that's cool mm-hmm. and better for our users and less effort for us to update them. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, uh, uh, on top of that, um, De- Deb Multimedia tends to enable all the compile features mm-hmm. uh, for them. So basically, uh, f- for FFmpeg on the Debian build. Uh, you don't have the AMF encoder uh, f- feature enabled mm-hmm. uh, or CUDA or whatever like OBS or FMPEG build options. Mm-hmm. Uh, Deb Multimedia just tries to enable the absolute the absolute maximum amount of build options, which is very helpful to users. Mm-hmm. So on the, the uh, oh, go on. Uh, I think the main thing we need the 32-bit libraries for is like if you're trying to hook into a and record like a, a 32-bit native game, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know why you'd have one of those, but it's, it's weird, weird Steam annoying stuff for all the games. Right, right. So on the topic of um, package building, just the fact that you guys are doing package building is already something that is very different from a lot of the a lot of the distros like the, the the build off one of these bases like just that by itself and some of these distros like um like endeavor they will build certain additional packages but most of what they do comes directly from arch whereas here you're actually it effectively is a separate distro like it is building off of those packages coming from debian but it's 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 not just 
what Debian has packaged. Yeah, so the yeah. Uh, we we, take, we do use their source packages where for the base where we can, mm -hmm. uh, but we do also we do also have our own Git instance with uh, around two hundred and fifty things that we've either written or packaged manually ourselves as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is a, it is a mix of both, but again, it's it's Debian SID mixed with experimental as well. So there isn't even a there isn't even a Debian flavor that matches what our base is. Right. Yeah, we're not even ABI compatible with Debian. Because <laughs> that's a, that's another thing that that um, I've seen come up. Like, oh, well, if it's uh, if it's Debian based, because people seem to think when when you say Debian based, they assume that you're talking about um, Debian stable. Uh, which I like to refer to as Debian stale, because that's what it is most of the time. Um, but that's not at all what this is. Yep, that's not what this is at all. Mm -hmm. no, and we even we even get, think, get things quicker than like Arch sometimes and stuff, so it's like... It depends on what it is and how much we prioritize it. Um, especially things like graphics drivers... The program languages we use, mm -hmm. we tend to get a lot earlier kernels, all that kind of thing. We get much earlier than, yeah, even Arch. That's not yeah, necessarily a, a good thing every time, though. I mean, we do test before sure. we push things. We don't, we don't just randomly push things up, but um, we, we're behind on the major things, mm -hmm. like uh, desktop environments, because mm -hmm. uh, we are still beholden to they're being upstream packaging them and they're not for outside of gnome mm -hmm. they're not there aren't that many people that do the packaging right like they, i don't think they have only have a couple of kde packages for example mm -hmm. which is crazy given the amount of packages that kde has mm -hmm. yeah i think um, kde has oh, the debian kde team has like only one active maintainer <laughs> for the yeah, entire so we... q for the entire qt and kde package set so we can be a little bit slower, but it's kind of that's kind of the best best way to do it, mm. right? Because your desktop environment you want to be stable. Sure. Um, whilst things like drivers you can just roll back, um, and you've got things like we ship mess of Git as well as mess of stable, that kind of thing, right? Okay, so you can I was say. you can be on the bleeding bleeding edge, or you can choose to be more stable mm -hmm. depending what you want. So it's up to the user at that point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. For for Mesa Git, uh, you can actually go to the device manager screenshot. Mm -hmm. You can see it as an option. Uh, on device manager, where is that one? That one? Uh, ah, the, yes. Yeah, device man. Okay, sweet. Thank you. And then I think that's the other thing is we testing a DE takes us longer because obviously there's only... Right. A couple of us, and we do have a, people in our community that do do help us test as well, which is great. Mm. Um, and we do ship betas sometimes and things like that. Um, so it can take us a little bit longer for the the larger things like uh, desktop environments, but mm -hmm. generally we're well, well, way faster, way faster than Debian, and uh, way f mm. Debian stable, and way faster than Ubuntu. Mm. Um, but I mean, it's not all about number go big, right? It, right, right. You need you need to be a stable base as well. You don't you don't want to be disrupting users. Don't break your users. There's no right. no need for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, when something does go wrong, how do you guys approach that? Do you like do you send out a notification to people on the Discord? Uh, what what's the, what's the the protocol you usually follow here? Well, generally do a Discord announcement. It depends on depends on what the issue is. If we mm. get something, we can just like roll back a package or something. We'll just roll back a package, or mm. or we'll fix forward. Uh, it it's pretty rare that we catastrophically break everybody. Right. Um, I can't think since we're switched on the Debian base. I can't think of a time we've done that. Mm -hmm. To be honest, um, our Discord is active. We have support sections that we maintain and we, we're constantly helping people um but yeah the main the main 
at, the, at this point, the main distribution of information is Discord. Mm -hmm. which probably isn't great. Um, we do have the change log on the website as well, but that only because we're rolling, we can't list every package that changes. Right, right, right. So uh, we just list the main ones there when we do a new ISO build generally. Mm -hmm. Um. It'll be interesting to see how we can improve that going forwards. Uh, this could do things like a mailing list, but then it, it feels a bit like 1980s at that point, and I don't know. Uh, if anyone has any great ideas on on how relying on Discord feels doesn't feel like the best way. Yeah, I but guess you could always a project. like you could always just put like a little notification on the website as well. Like, just mirror whatever notification yeah, you would have put on Discord. But who's uh, constantly visiting the website? That's true, but if you have a problem, and if you sort of make it clear that things will be posted on the website, there is a news feed on the website, then you, if something goes wrong, that would be one of the first places people would start to go. Yeah, and maybe a status page, I guess, that... Mm -hmm. Uh, as we found out with Discord earlier, they're very useful when uh, <laughs> things do go wrong. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I saw... <laughs> I sent the message being like, hey, you're ready to start. Literally, when I pressed enter, my Discord client died. Like, oh, lovely. Perfect timing. Yeah, I mean, it's better timing than my lock fucking exploding. <laughs> Yeah, um, this it was a good good start we had today. <laughs> Very good start we had. Like, um, so regarding the whole notification thing, this is one of the things I like to discuss because I have been quite critical of the way that like Arch handles it. Arch will only put a notification on the website on the most critical of critical things. Even when there are cases where most people are affected by it and most people need to do some manual intervention, they just don't mention anything. And it it ends up being that the unofficial channels, like posts on the forums or like the Reddit, end up being a better news feed than the news feed of the distro itself. I guess the other option is having like an in distro notification thing, but then that feels. I don't weird. like. Yeah, that's kind of Microsofty, isn't it? It just yeah. feels a bit invasive at that point. Um, so we don't we don't have any telemetry or anything mm -hmm. running. Uh, yeah. We don't have. We don't even have no donation pops or anything. Nothing mm -hmm. like. Which we probably we we have a donation button in our welcome app that you're mm -hmm. welcome to press. Other than that. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think the only thing that really needs to be there, like and the, full notifications are that's too much. But having, having a, having a news feed of some sort that people can go to, I think that's fine. Like if if people, even if you wanted to have like a a, a PicoOS news app, right? Like it, I think that would be fine as something that people could choose to go and open when they want to. Um, but maybe uh, uh maybe if we added a status page to the website we could hmm. then have a, a tab in the welcome app that just loads that in like a gtk web view i guess that makes sense yeah 